Jim, this one sent in the corny drive through at gmail.com from James. Mike Pappas recently passed away. Pappas. Pappas. I do that every time. What are Jim's memories of Mike Pappas and his wrestling career? Boy, I, t- I actually got to see Mike Pappas uh, live in person a number of times. He was here in, in the Tennessee Territory in 76. I saw him at the Gardens. He had been here before, and I'd seen him on television. You know, he was, he was an exciting underneath preliminary baby face. And I know that everybody now, I've just completely lost them because they're like, what, what, what do you mean? He was only like five foot four. And even though he was, he was five, four, he was stocky. They, they announced him at, I think two ten or something. He was probably one ninety, but you couldn't say a, a pro wrestler was under 200 pounds in those days. People would have laughed at it like they should be now. But he could do the drop kicks and the flying shit and the head scissors. And when I saw him, it was on the tail end of his career. He was probably all right. Well, he just died. He was 85. So if I saw him 47 years ago, he was almost 40 then. But the idea, he was never in main events. He wasn't, a, you know, a main event guy, or did they push him as a main event guy? But you knew who he was because he was different. The flying Greek, Mike Pappas, he was the short guy that did all the fancy moves and flummoxed to the, the opponents where they couldn't catch him and they couldn't find him. And you could use him on the card. He meant more than just the average underneath babyface because of his unique style and his different little gimmick and the fact that he was of different size. And, you know, people liked him. And that's what we're missing today because, <clears throat> I mean, they just use guys in up and down the card against other heels or other baby faces, and, and there's no specific spot like that anymore. But that's the spot you would put him in. He had several runs in the WWWF, probably the smallest guy I would think that Vince Sr. ever pushed at all. But because, again, he had the... And it wasn't, again, like today where he was just doing ridiculous backflips off the top rope with people waiting to catch him on the floor and all that horse shit. He would do drop kicks and he'd do quick flying head scissors. And I remember, I've got a picture that I took at the gardens of him doing the headstand on the turnbuckle when guys would shoot him across the ring from buckle to buckle, he would go in forward and he would leap up and do a headstand with his feet up in the air on the top turnbuckle. And when the heel ran at him to try to get him, he would kick off over and land on his feet and do some snazzy move. Um, And it, again, a great classic underneath baby face that the people really liked and had his own gimmick and his own supporters. And the, the famous picture was in the centerfold of wrestling world magazine that I think was taken in the WWWF territory of Andre holding Mike Pappas in his arm. The tall and the talented was the label of the Andre poster, but he's got Mike Pappas because Mike was the shortest guy on the card. So it made Andre look even bigger. That's the centerfold that I had Andre autograph for me when I first met him the very first time. But anyway, that's, you know, since uh, I guess Mike Pappas retired in the late 70s, 78, 79, and settled in Missouri, he had worked the central states some and opened up a jewelry store. And that's what he's been doing for the past 40 years. He became more well-known as a jeweler than he than he was maybe as a wrestler. But a nice guy. Just, I, I think I met him in passing as a fan one time to get the handshake, right? But I never really, you know, got to know him or anything. But one of those guys that you m- remember the name, you remember the way he worked because it was different. And the the fact that he was so short back in those days, which was so unusual, made him stand out even more. And that he was you know, he was a little smiling guy with a bald spot on his head. So he looked his age, but he, you know, moved like a real, you know, younger athlete. And that's the flying Greek Mike Pappas. Not much footage of him out there. I don't think there's any. 
I don't. I'm trying to think uh, if I have seen any ever. I don't know where it would be from. It maybe when he was in Florida, they they kept so many years of the Florida library. They kept Vern's AWA stuff. He didn't work there. Uh, For people who think you just hate small wrestlers, because you'll say it in a derisive fashion, and also you hate Gargano, but you know, here you are talking about the strengths of Mike Pappas. You talk about Bill Dundee, who was no more than four foot six. Let's be honest. Oh come on! I'm going to say Dundee's either five six or five seven, and he may have been like everybody. He was an inch taller when he was younger, but he was also for most of the time that he was wrestling between. 210, 225 pounds with that big chest. He could bench press his ass off and he came across, and also because of the way he worked, he came across as punching above his weight, as they say in boxing. And believe me, if Dundee hit you with a working punch, he was punching above his fucking weight. Well, my question was going to be, yeah, the people who think that you hate small wrestlers or smaller wrestlers, wrestlers under five foot eight, what do they get wrong? They get, it's not, there's no rule of thumb. If, if Jim Londos was five foot eight and he was the biggest box office attraction in the history of wrestling, but he had the big chest. Also a hundred years ago, people were a little shorter. You didn't see a lot of fucking seven foot people walking around a hundred years ago, but it's the package. It's the appearance. It's the height and the weight and the way it's put together. If you've got to get, Bulldog Brower, what was he, five foot nine, five ten, but he was two hundred and seventy pounds with that fucking huge chest. If if you've got shorter guys but they're bigger, or you got bigger guys but they're shorter, or you or you have a guy who's, I mean, Conor McGregor is not either tall or heavy, but he has a look, and he's a dynamite kid before he got on steroids to go to the WWF. He was, yeah, sure, 5'10", but he was 185, 190 pounds, but he looked like he was goddamn ripped and built in a laboratory. It's not... It, it, there's so many now small guys that look young because they are young. They either can't figure out, grow a beard, get something to make you older, I don't drink, do drugs, age yourself. I don't fucking know. But everybody that wants to get into the wrestling business looks like a small child, both in terms of size, in terms of face, in terms of voice. I mean, you know, and yes, they can kick the shit out of some people. But that that's not what this is about. It's not about can this five foot seven 175 pound guy that's trained in judo or mixed martial arts kicked the shit out of the guy working at the Exxon station. It's whether or not on television, this guy looks like he can kick the shit out of Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar or fucking John Cena or goddamn in AEW. Did they have any tough looking motherfuckers? Well, you know what I'm saying? That's the problem is that everybody looks now because there is there's a it's harder to get into the money in MMA but there's more money in MMA now and it looks like all the fucking guys that look like men and look like badasses whether it be the Jim Duggins or the Dr. Des or the Road Warriors or whatever the fuck either don't exist anymore or want to be UFC fighters and not pro wrestlers because pro wrestlers end up, especially at AEW because of the EVPs and because of their taste in other men, a bunch of fucking kids that grew up in the backyard training themselves on their trampolines. And that does not convince the average American citizen or the average global citizen that this guy's a star and an ass kicker and a badass, and a fucking wrestling champion. So again, it's not just about the size, it's about the whole package. But we can't be ridiculous 
and have a roster full of guys that are 220, 230, 240, 250, and then here comes a 160-pound guy with a fucking page boy haircut like Pip Sabian, and he's going to be competitive. Give me a Darby Allen's got a weird charisma. You know what? So there, Darby Allen, maybe he's the Mike Pappas of today because his shit at least looks good, even though he's a mental case. His shit looks good. And he looks like he's trying and he's taking it seriously. So maybe he's the Mike Pappas today. He's the guy. If you're going to have one, have one that has charisma, that people want to see as a personality, and that shit looks good. And then don't have any others because then they'll just detract from that guy. It's like every really skinny wrestler isn't the same. There's a difference between a Sean Waltman and a Kendall Windham. Boom goes the dynamite. There you go. And now somebody out there will not be able to figure out who we were complimenting, but hopefully the smart ones will get it. Yes, it was Sean. Yes, absolutely. But think about how many wrestlers, you know, you say it's about the whole package. There are other wrestlers who can have that physique and it wouldn't work the same way it did with Sean Waltman. Yeah, well, and there's other wrestlers that can be six foot six and 280 pounds and be built like Luger and they're still the shits, right? And, uh, I mean, we, if, if we're looking for a visually intimidating guy, the fucking tattooed face fucker on AEW, well, you wouldn't want to be walking down the street and see him because he looks like a homeless meth addict. Who else tattoos their fucking face? When we find out where the fuck this guy came from, we may very well find out he is a homeless meth addict. But he's got a look, so you'd be scared of him. But as we've seen... He can't fucking work. So Ed, that's part of the package too. Size, look, way you carry yourself, demeanor, work, aura. It's all there. 